Hi everyone! Welcome to Soup Up Recipes. I'm Mandy. My family has a tradition. Every year during the Autumn Festival, we'll cure tons of meat, enough for the following year. We make so many variations, such as la chen, la yu, la gai, la yu. I do have a la chen recipe, which I made two years ago. The recipe is right here. You can check it out later. Today, I want to show you how to make la yu because it is a popular ingredient and it is harder to find outside of China. Once you learned it, you can use it to make lots of traditional Chinese recipes, such as Cantonese fried rice, clay pot rice, taro cake, Cantonese turnip cake, and XO sauce. I'll link all these recipes in the description. You can check them out later. All right, let's get started. Cured bacon is popular all over China. What makes this recipe Cantonese is the super simple seasoning. I'm making four kilograms of meat today, so I will need three and a half tablespoons of salt, preferably sea salt or iodine free salt, one cup plus a quarter cup of sugar, one cup plus a quarter cup of soy sauce, a quarter cup of dark soy sauce. Optionally, I like to add one tablespoon of Sichuan peppercorn just for the aroma. This is rose cooking wine, often used in most Cantonese siu la recipes. It provides a light, refreshing rose fragrance. This doesn't affect the taste, so you can skip it or replace it with a tablespoon of edible rose water. My family have used this formula for decades. Although it looks simple, trust me, it is going to be super delicious. Mix this really well and let's move on to the pork. This is a piece of skin on pork belly. Skinless will also work. Slice it into one and a half inch wide strips. Some people will use pork shoulder, which is much leaner. It works okay, but I do want to mention that the difference between Chinese bacon and Western bacon is that we will dehydrate the meat. That's how it stays good for the whole year. It will lose about 30% of the weight. If you use a lean cut, it gets tough and chewy over time. I personally like to use pork belly because those striation layers ensure the meat stays juicy. We're going to toss the pork in some high alcohol content liquor. My family will use bai zhou, which is a colorless liquor distilled from fermented sorghum. The alcohol content is usually between 35 to 60%. Bai zhou is very difficult to find outside of China, so what I'm using is vodka. This is what the bottle looks like. The alcohol content is 50%. Other liquor that the alcohol content is higher than 30% will also work, such as rum or whiskey. There are two purposes of using alcohol when preserving meat. First, it inhibits bacteria growth, which increases the chance of success. Second, although most of the alcohol will evaporate during the fermentation, a small amount will react with the fatty acid and create esterification, which forms esters. That gives the meat lots of flavors. When all the pork is nicely tossed with the alcohol, transfer it into a different container and leave the excess alcohol behind. Pour the marinade that we just made. Continue to toss thoroughly. FYI, for those who cannot cook with alcohol for religious reasons, the only solution is to skip it and make sure anything that touches the pork is super clean, so you increase the chance of success. The final flavor will be different without the alcohol, but it will still taste delicious. All right. The pork is nicely mixed with the seasoning. 
I like to place a few plates on the top just to give it a slight pressure so the marinade can reach more of the pork. We will let this sit in the fridge for 36 hours. Come back every 12 hours and give it another toss to ensure an even marinade. There are many methods to make cured meat. The traditional way is to hang it outside for two to three weeks and be aware of the weather. We have a saying in Cantonese called Chao Feng Hei Sit La Mei, which means when autumn winds eat preserved meat. Autumn is the best season to make cured meat because the weather is perfect. It doesn't rain too much. The wind helps to dehydrate the meat. It's not too hot. Otherwise, you get lots of flies and bugs when you hang the meat outside. It is not freezing cold either, which allows the fermentation that gives the cured meat the distinctive taste. I really wanted to show you the traditional hanging method, but South Florida is too hot for that. I just checked the weather. There's not even one day in a year that the temperature is below 60. So I can only show you the oven method in this video. However, I wrote down the instructions here. If the weather in your area is good, you can give it a try. Also, here is a dehydrator method, just so you have one more option. This is 36 hours later. The pork is nicely marinated and ready to go. Use a sharp little knife to poke a hole through the skin. Be super careful, don't cut yourself. Use the chopsticks to help to push the kitchen twine through the hole. Tie it up. Do that to the rest of the pork. Tie the kitchen twine on the oven rack. Leave some space between them. Be sure to place a big tray at the bottom and line it with tin foil just to catch the drips. My oven is big enough for me to hang the meat. If your oven is small, you can place the pork on the rack, but you will get the rack pattern on one side of the pork, which is completely fine in taste. You can also cut your pork strips shorter in order for you to hang them. Carefully slide the rack into the oven. We want to dehydrate the pork, not to cook it. You have to use the lowest temperature on your oven. It should be between 120 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. My oven can go down to 150 degrees Fahrenheit exactly, which works just fine. If your oven's minimum temperature is higher than 150 degrees Fahrenheit, you can prop the oven door to keep it slightly open so the extra temperature inside the oven is lower. Since we got plenty of time to wait, let me introduce you to today's sponsorship. Souped Up Recipes Ceramic Chopsticks. I just launched these. I know ceramic may sound new to you, but it is the best material for chopsticks because it is easy to clean, dishwasher safe, it doesn't get mold or rust. Unlike wooden chopsticks that you have to replace them every three to six months because of hygiene issues, ceramic chopsticks will look brand new even if you have used them for years. Chopsticks are essential in Chinese cuisine. I eat with them every single day. They are also great cooking utensils to beat eggs, stir fry noodles, poke holes, flip ingredients, transfer food from one plate to another, so versatile. I designed them in four different patterns. They're so beautiful and elegant. It will be a great gift item for your friends and family. If you want to buy them, the link is in the description. We have 15% discount sale for the holiday. Go check it out. My pork looks like this after 20 hours. The strips become much shorter. There is a lot of oil dripped down to the baking tray that is completely normal. The texture is firm. The color is nice and brown, really shiny. It smells amazing too. Your lap yolk is basically done 
and ready for any recipe that asks for Chinese cured bacon. To store them, a lot of people will put it in a Ziploc bag or seal it in a vacuum bag and freeze it. It will stay good for eight to twelve months. But I like to do an optional step before I freeze mine. I will wrap it with paper towels and put it in the fridge for four weeks. Do not wrap it in plastic bags. It needs to be uncovered, or else it will trap moisture and that will cause spoilage. After four weeks, I will seal it in vacuum bags and freeze it. Let me explain why I do this extra step. There are three important things when curing meat: seasoning, dehydration, and fermentation. So far, we have done the seasoning and dehydration. As for the fermentation, you need time for that. There is no shortcuts. I mean, the pork tastes amazing already, but letting it sit in the fridge will develop even more distinctive and complex flavor. Do not worry that it is going to go bad because the high salt and sugar content will keep it good. Also, it is well dehydrated, so it won't spoil easily. My family will hang it at the ceiling right above the firewood stove. Every day when we cook, we light up the wood. The smoke and little bit of heat will help with the preservation. That's why it stays good for years. However, if you don't have that type of daily smoking environment, four weeks is enough. You have to seal it and freeze it. All right, that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and give it a try soon. As always, the printable recipe will be on my website, soupedoprecipes.com. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video to your friends and families. That really encouraged me to continue to make more delicious recipes. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.